It starts out on a rainy night. Tess Marshall arrives at the 467 Barbary Street Airbnb she reserved, but she is unable to find the home key or contact the person who reserved her. She rings the doorbell as soon as she leaves after observing the house's light switch on. When Keith Toshko answers, he claims to have also reserved the rented house. Keith invites Tess to come in while they attempt to figure things out because they can't get in touch with the bookers. She asked if she could use the restroom, but she also requested that Keith pull up his reservation verification to ensure it was correct. As she walked to the restroom, she noticed a lady's purse and shampoo and doubts his intentions since there was no female in the room with him. In the meantime, he brings up his reservation to clarify her concerns. Tess struggles to find another hotel, so Keith decides to invite Tess to spend the night, to which she agrees. Tess is unable to make a hotel reservation elsewhere due to a convention taking place in town. Keith informs her that she may use the room while he sleeps on the couch. She finds his wallet with his identity card after entering the bedroom and later returns it to him. After taking a shower, Keith invites her to share a bottle of wine. She mentions that the meeting is for a job interview with Bonnie Zane, a director. Tess believed no one else would have watched her final movie, but Keith claims he has. Before turning in, they spend some time talking. Tess hears Keith gasping in his sleep during the night, probably as a result of night terrors. She appears to be trying to wake him up, but both of them are startled. Keith denies there is anything wrong. Tess shows up for her interview the following day. She is taken aback when she comes outside and notices how the houses around the Airbnb appear to have been abandoned and are in disrepair. Tess then heads to the cafe to meet Bonnie. When Tess discloses where she is lodging, because it's a dangerous area, Bonnie advises her to leave. But she paid her no mind. When Tess approaches her rented house again, a man named Andre chases her down and orders her to leave. She got scared and managed to get inside the house. Despite feeling a little uneasy, Tess carries on with her plans and eventually goes to the basement. She leaves her cell phone on the dining table as the door shuts behind her. She next discovers a rope fastened to the wall and a hidden underpass. Tess enters the cave briefly after some initial hesitation. She panics when she discovers a chamber with a bed, a camera, a red fingerprint on the wall. When she returns to the basement, she notices Keith outside and asks him to help her escape. Tess describes what she observed to Keith and urges him to leave the neighborhood. Keith goes to investigate in an effort to assure her that nothing is worrisome down there. After some while, Tess descends the stairway in search of Keith. She can hear Keith yelling and pleading for help. And a stairway leading further down. He claims that something bit him when Tess discovers him in the tunnel. A terrifying naked humanoid beast known as the Mother emerges before they can flee and crushes Keith's skull until he is lifeless before roaring at Tess. After an unspecified period of time, screenwriter Ray J. Gilbride receives a phone call from his co-workers while he is on the road. They inform him that due to a woman's claim that AJ sexually assaulted her, he is no longer working on their most recent project. Although he insists on his innocence, thereafter his accountant withdraws as a client. Later, when AJ goes out with a friend, he almost openly admits that he forced the woman into having sex. Afterwards, AJ travels to Detroit and rents a house, which further happens to be the Barbary residence. Once there, he discovers Tess's suitcases. He believes someone is probably staying there due to items he found. So he entered the basement to look around. The mother finds him and pursues him before he plunges into something of a pit in which Tess is also being held captive. Rewind to the 1980s, when Barbary Street was crowded with people. Frank, a resident of the same home, visits a store to buy baby supplies. A young woman is then spotted, and he stalks her home. Frank dresses up in the disguise of a worker from the electric company, in order to enter her home and unlock her bathroom window, Doug notifies Frank that both he and his spouse are leaving their house when he returns home. In the present day, Tess begs AJ to remain quiet and to stop being so agitated. After that, the mother puts a baby bottle into the pit for Tess to drink from, but AJ is less eager. The mother jumps down the pit and cares for Tess as if she were her own baby, but she screeches and growls at AJ. 
When the mother becomes upset with AJ, she drags him into her room. Tess successfully climbed out of the pit and started to leave. However, AJ is abandoned and confined in a space where the mother makes him drink off of her. Before the mother can get to Tess, she successfully breaks the window leading to the basement and is dragged out by Andre. Tess refuses to go back to rescue AJ despite Andre's best efforts to lead her to safety. Tess contacts the police, but then when they show there they think she's a drug addict because of the way she looks. She takes officers to the house, but the police depart because she is unable to show them any proof of a crime. Tess awaits until it is dark outside before breaking in to collect her car keys. The mother appears as Tess enters into her car and attempts to break into it, but Tess slams into the exterior of the house in an attempt to kill the mother, only temporarily knocking her out. Frank is bedridden and on the verge of passing away when AJ enters the room. AJ views various recordings that Frank has collected over the years of the women he has molested. Frank takes out a revolver and fires himself in the head as AJ calls him out because of how terrible of a person he is. AJ leaves the room after grabbing the weapon. Tess is back there and calls to him, which causes AJ to become alarmed and fire. Despite having been shot in the stomach, AJ assists Tess in leaving the house. Tess notices that the mother is not where she was when they first arrived outside. She claims to be aware where they can flee, telling AJ. Tess takes AJ down to the water's edge, where Andre had instructed her to seek refuge. He informs them that Frank was the property owner and was probably the source who hired the victims. The mother is a result of incestuous rape which has been occurring in the home for more than 40 years. He would abduct women and rape them, producing offspring that he'd also rape. Andre is sure she can't find them, but his certainty is swiftly dispelled when the mother appears, pulls off his hand, and smashes him to death. Tess and AJ flee for escape and climb a water tower. Just as the mother begins to approach them, AJ drops the pistol. AJ believes he can turn things around and protect them both. He snatches Tess and hurls her from the tower because he knows the mother will pursue her alleged baby out of instinct. AJ descends and discovers the mother appearing to be dead. As AJ tries to explain what happened to Tess, the mother rises again, gouges AJ's eyeballs out with her fingertips, and then splits his head in two. The mother then scurries over to Tess, who has already grabbed the pistol. Before she fires the gun, she has a faint expression of sadness. Tess then stands up and leaves the location to seek medical help. The movie comes to an end here. What are your thoughts on this film? Please let us know in the comments section below whether you liked it or not. As always, thank you for watching, and if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.